Did you know that bleeding is the number one cause of preventable death and trauma? Well, let's learn how to fix that. Before we begin, let's recap a little bit from last week. If you haven't watched the first episode in this series, I encourage you to go back and start there. That's going to be a basic overview of everything. And then these next few weeks, we're going to dive in deeper on each one of those topics. I'd also encourage you to watch this with everybody in your group, or at least send it to them. So everybody's on the same page, because if only one person knows how to treat a medical issue, and they're the person that has a medical issue, then it's not going to go well. I also encourage you to watch this with your family. Kids, I mean, even my two-year-old daughter probably could figure out how to put some of these things on. So I think it'd be a great thing to start teaching the kids in case something terrible happens. So start working with it, start training, and hopefully you never have to use this, but it definitely could save your life someday if you do or someone else's life. So let's get into it now. So the main thing we're trying to do in trauma is stop bleeding and then we go from there. That's the main focus here is keeping blood inside of somebody. doesn't matter how well you splint their arm if they bleed out and end up dying from that. So the main thing that we're trying to do is to stop that bleeding long enough that the body can start building clots on its own. The body's always going to try to clot off blood flow like that, but it's not going to, with pressure and things like that, not always going to be able to do so. So there's some very simple things we can do all the way up to pretty much everything I'm going to talk about today is simple. But so what I want to do, we'll go through some stuff here. Um, we're going to learn about tourniquets. There's multiple different types of tourniquets. There's probably half a dozen tourniquets out there. Each one of them has its own benefits, own pros, own cons. And so definitely we'll talk about a little bit of that. We're going to talk about a pressure bandage. Uh, it used to be called an Israeli bandage. Multiple different companies make these also. And then some more simple things. I've got like some 4x4 four four gauze here, um, some Curlex, things like that. And I've also got some just rolled bandage. So each one of these has a place. Anytime we're training, let's try to make it as realistic as possible. Ideally, you'd be wearing some sort of medical gloves. These are nitrile gloves. Uh, medical community has moved away from latex just with latex allergies and everything like that. So there is a little bit of a difference feeling tactile wise and everything between gloves and your bare hands. Really with all the bloodborne illnesses and everything like that, definitely want to be wearing, don't want your bare hands exposed. So we'll get these on. These aren't sterile gloves, so you don't have to worry about touching the outside or anything like that. These are to keep you safe. They are clean, especially if you've been out in the wilderness for days, not really able to wash your hands. These are probably a whole lot cleaner than your hands. But the main thing is to keep you safe, not necessarily whoever you're treating. So let's pretend that I've got a cut here. We'll say this bracelet is a cut. Say I was uh, you know, preparing dinner out at camp and sliced my, my wrist with a knife. So the first thing we could do is take just just four by four gauze. You can get these anywhere. This is from my local grocery store, actually. Um, drug stores, you can even, these these you can get on Amazon. The Band-Aid brand, there's multiple ones that, that sell these. Pretty good there. You don't have to worry about that too much. So the first thing you could do is just take this and put pressure directly down on it. We'll say it's not the whole all the way around, but put direct pressure on there. That pressure is gonna kind of help close off the blood vessels and allow the body to start naturally forming blood clots and going down like it normally would. So holding it here, not going to be a real great way to do it. That's where something like this Curlex would come in. This wraps around itself and sticks to itself so it can hold it on. If you've ever given blood, this is the same stuff that they use for that. So, but once you put this on, don't do what I did and take it off. It needs to stay on because every time you pull it off, it's going to pull that blood clot. Anything that was on stuck to here is going to get ripped apart. So put it on. If it's starting to bleed through, you can put more on top, um, but keep putting pressure down and hold it in place. That's where this comes in also. So these come in a pretty thick package. Open these up and it's vacuum sealed in here in another package. This is why it's important to train, know your stuff. So that the first time you're opening this isn't when someone's life is in danger, know exactly what you're supposed to do. So I'm gonna open this up and these are pretty easy. You just tear like that and you can pull that out. So get that out of the way got pictures here it says other side to wound and we'll open this up pretty much as a general rule anything that's rolled leave it rolled don't extend it all the way out and then as you're trying to wrap it you've got a six foot long thing so if you leave it rolled it's got on this side a almost like gauze like material 
And then this side, you've got this plastic clip. We'll get into that in a little bit. So we're going to put this around. This is always easier if you have somebody else to do it. But I've got the side to the wound down. And then we get to this clip. There's two different ways. You can just wrap it around and that puts a little bit of pressure, but not a lot. So if you're just trying to cover it up, that's perfectly fine. If you need it to be pressurized though, and that's what this clip does, is it puts pressure down. So you're gonna go over it and into the clip like that. You can see we went through. Then you pull back on it. And as you wrap it around, every time you do this, it gets a little bit tighter and it's putting pressure right here where that clip is pushing down. You can pull this tight and it's not gonna be a tourniquet, but it's gonna be about like what you would put pressure with your hand. Kind of pull a little bit tight there. So kind of moving up and down, just covering everything up with it. There's these little strings on here that just help roll it up. Just keep pulling, those will come right off. Stretch it out, around, and then we get to the end, and it's got this. That is to clip it onto itself. So you kind of hook it through the other layer like that, and then if you can find another one, and that just helps keep it in place. So not really super tight, but it's putting pressure, holding pressure right on that wound. So that's a good option. Obviously not gonna be for that, that arterial bleeding we were looking at last week. This is gonna be more venous, uh, a more shallow cut that's bleeding. You wanna put pressure on it. Um, but that's a good option there. So let's get this off. Other times you could use this. These are, are fairly helpful, like for building a splint even, just to wrap it. So if you're looking to try to minimize the amount of stuff you have to carry, this would be a good option also to try to wrap it. You obviously wouldn't really do the pressure side. And then another trip, tip when you're training with these, wrap them back up as you go. It makes it a lot easier to put everything away. For time's sake, I'm just gonna kind of wrap it off like this. But hopefully that makes sense. Get through like that and then you pull it down and you can kind of see as I do that, it does put some pressure down. And do this. So that's the pressure dressing, pressure bandage, a couple different names. A lot of different companies make these. So check that out. They're pretty inexpensive and very, very helpful. And you can use them for a lot of different things. This is an elastic bandage. So anytime you need to secure something, you could use this. So those are two pretty easy ways to control bleeding. Not going to be for major bleeding, arterial bleeding, like we talked about last week. That's going to be, so our arteries are higher pressure, go away from the heart, and they deliver oxygenated blood to the tissue. That pressure is going to cause that if you cut it to, they say like kind of spray out. This isn't going to be like a garden hose or anything, but a lot more pressure pressurized than just kind of that oozing bleeding. We've all seen you cut your finger or something, it just kind of oozes. It's not going to be like that. It's going to be much higher pressure. And that's where something like a tourniquet comes in. I've got a couple different ones. There's this style has what's called a windlass. It's this stick here, basically. And you use that to tighten it. There's some other styles like this one. This is the rat's tourniquet. This one, all you do is wrap it around, similar to what we were doing with the pressure bandage. Um, but this puts a lot more force down. And basically what you can think about is on my arm here, there's bones we all know there's bones, right? Well, the arteries and the blood vessels run alongside the bones. And so when you put this on, it clamps down, it presses again, that artery against the bone and cuts off the blood flow. So that's all we're trying to do with these is to clamp down on those blood vessels and cut off the blood flow. So there's different ones. Um, we don't have to get in the weeds on it. There's some that are approved by the military, some that aren't. Do your testing on your own on that. Um, the ones that, that the military approves, this one is the cat tourniquet from North American Rescue. There's a bunch of different other ones like that, um, but that's the style with the windlass. There's other ones that almost look like an elastic band. There's some that have a little dial that you twist to, to, get, to, to get that pressure down on it. One tip, I like to have mine set up only used for training or only used for real life. I've heard some stories that if you're training a lot with them, you start to put some, some fatigue into it. Not necessarily a huge deal. I've been training with this one for a few years now, really cranked down on it, never had any issues, but it's a good way. Also, it keeps them, if this one, it 
it's not clean as much as something that's still in the package and all that. So um, if you want to, having a separate one for training is probably a good idea. At least in the EMS world, blue kind of means training and then black or orange is what we use for the, the real ones. So, um, but the training ones are the exact same. So in a pinch, you can definitely use these two. On that note, black is kind of what the, the military tactical side uses. EMS, we, we've, we have some black ones, we're switching more over to orange. The reason being, in civilian side, especially, you know, overlanding, backpacking like that, doesn't really matter if they're, if they don't have to be camouflaged or anything like that. So the black doesn't stand out. Not always a great idea though. If, you know, in a, in a traumatic situation, stress is going to be high, stuff can get overlooked. When the ambulance gets there, you might for, totally forget that you threw a tourniquet on somebody. And if they've got black tourniquet against dark clothing, it might kind of blend in. Now, hopefully people are going to see that. But if it's brighter colored, it's a lot easier to pick up on exactly where that is. So tourniquets, pretty simple. There's a lot of different ways you can stage them. It depends on what you're doing with it. Some people like to have them pre-sized for them. So you could you could kind of figure out how big your leg is, have it pre-sized so you just slide it on. This one is pretty simple. Whichever one you get, obviously make sure you train with it. But this, you have a buckle. You run this tab through here and then you just pull it as tight as you need put that down and then start turning it. So we'll do a demonstration, same thing, pretending that this is where the injury is. So we'll have that open. We wanna go about two to three inches above the injury. I know in the military, it's high and tight. That's for care under fire. Hopefully we're not getting shot at while we're overlanding. If that's the case, then yes, high and tight. But we wanna get this down lower, minimizes the tissue damage. You have about six to 10 hours before you have to get your arm amputated from a tourniquet, but if we can minimize that, that's that's the best case scenario. So we get it on, we pull it as tight as possible, and then we start spinning this. It is going to hurt, it doesn't feel good, you're putting a lot of pressure down, but it's gonna save somebody's life. If they have something like that, it's not really gonna matter too much to them. So we'll get this in, kind of a weird angle here. You wanna make sure you get the windlass inside these clips here, like that, so that it gets locked into place. Then you take this tab and go over it. You wanna make, you're gonna spin that until the bleeding stops. You might get a little bit of oozing, just residual stuff, but the spraying high pressure bleeding needs to stop. Keep turning that. It might seem like it's way too tight. You shouldn't even be able to think about getting a finger or anything underneath here. Um, definitely not very comfortable right now. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this off. Not something you would do though. Once you put a tourniquet on, leave it in place. Wait until they get to the hospital, let the doctors and everybody there figure out if this needs to come off or not, but put it on, get it as tight as you possibly can, leave it there. Then what you wanna do every time you move somebody, once they've got a tourniquet on, double check. Because if you're pulling somebody in and out of a vehicle, uh, you know, if you've, if you've got them on a sled or whatever you're doing, that easily could get caught up on something. Yes, you have the safety strap in place, but that's just Velcro. So double check that every time you move them, make sure it's tight, make sure that the bleeding hasn't started back up again, make sure it's still in place, just to make sure that they're not bleeding out something that you don't see. That being said, down here, you don't have to worry about it as much. I've got a t-shirt on, but winter time, whatever, you've got a sweatshirt, make sure you get the clothes out of the way. Think of how much blood a sweatshirt could absorb here. You might not even know that they're bleeding as bad as they are. So that's stuff to keep in mind. This is the rat's tourniquet a little bit different design. So this, you slide your arm in like that. And then we're going to wrap it. Actually, let's go up a little higher. The benefit to this is it can go on a smaller limb. So this was designed by a special forces medic, I believe. And they do a lot with, with animals and children. Unfortunately, we have to design a tourniquet for children, but that's the case. So this one, every time you pull it tighter and tighter, it gets a little tighter every time you go around. And then once you get to where you wanna be, it's hard to do one-handed, you come up and it just gets locked in place there. And so it looks like that. I cannot extend my fingers. That's how tight it is. Um, can't feel a pulse, so I, it's working. There's a lot of controversy here. You see it, it's, there's some skin here like this. They say it can cause some issues like that, but I would much rather lose my arm from here down than die from something. So this gets a lot smaller. I'll show you here in a second once I get it off. So they, they if you have dogs, 
Um, I mean, it can go about like that small, basically. Where this cat style, I need a windless style. This is the, the downfall of it. That's as small as it can go. So if you have a, a small child, probably not going to work. If you have a dog, probably not going to work. Um, so something to think about. There's other different styles. Um, there's one that, that's almost like an elastic band. It's a bit bigger, like a couple, probably four inches or so. Um, different styles like that. So I would encourage you try to find a stop the bleed class. They they'll have a bunch of those. You can try them hands on. Um, if not, I'd recommend checking out one of these, checking out the soft tea tourniquet. That's another one. Um, I'm going to, in a couple weeks here, I'll go through some different options, different medical kits and kind of talk about that. But I want to go through the basic stuff of what to, what you training you should have. And then we'll get into that kind of stuff. So tourniquets can only go on arms and legs. Obviously. I mean, I guess it could go around the neck, but not a great idea. Can't go over joints because the joints don't compress. The blood vessels actually run inside of the joints. They're not on the outside. So you're not going to be able to compress that enough to stop the bleeding. The armpit, you can kind of only go up so high there before you're not able to do it too. So it's just going to be check and see. If you've got a different spot, there's something called wound packing. You're going to take rolled gauze, combat gauze, hemostatic gauze, whatever you have. Hemostatic gauze, I think are probably the best bet. Those actually help the blood clots form. Hemo means blood, static means stop. So it means blood stopping basically. Um, they're treated with a special chemical and it helps to actually encourage the body to stop bleeding. This, again, leave these rolled up. Don't roll it down the sidewalk. These are, this one here, it doesn't say it's in the box, but these are fairly long, six to 10 feet long usually. So what you're gonna do is if you've got a wound here, you're just going to take this and push it in and keep doing this, keep doing this till you get as much in there as you possibly can. This is not going to feel good to whoever you're doing this to, but it's going to save their life. This is the same concept basically as a tourniquet or the pressure dressing. You're just doing it inside right at the level of the blood vessel. This is another skill I would highly recommend you find to stop the bleed course and actually practice it. Or if you have the ability to get access to a mannequin or something, practice this. It's Definitely an interesting skill. It kind of feels weird when you're doing it for the first couple times. Um, but on a small, relatively small wound, you should be able to get almost this whole thing in. You want to be packing, packing. When you're done, it should almost feel like it's cement there. And that's and then you then you would go and put either uh, Curlex or some sort of elastic bandage over top to hold that in place. The, the pressure bandage would work really well for that as well. So these things really only work on the extremities. The chest, you're not going to be able to put enough of this in to really seal that off and if you do you're going to put pressure on the heart and lungs and they're not going to work same thing in the abdomen you're not you're not able to do this to the abdomen and unfortunately there's not a lot you can do there we'll get to that later on down the line of of uh occlusive dressings and things for the chest but in that case we're just going to cover it up kind of as a rule abdomen wounds you can cover it just put bandages over top of it chest wounds you want to cover it with something that's sealed to the air so it can't get in and out but we'll talk about that later on so today i just want to talk about basically tourniquets for sure if you don't have one of these you can get them they're not that expensive a cat tourniquet is 30 or 40 dollars the other ones are right in that same ballpark so i would highly recommend getting a few of these i've actually got one right up here for when i'm driving if something terrible happens i can just reach right up and i've got it so a caution Getting a lot of medical supplies on Amazon, not a great idea. There's a lot of knockoff stuff. Probably not worth risking your life to save 5 or $10 on that stuff. So I'd highly recommend going to a, a well-known, respected company, Sartooth Group. I will link them in the description below. They're new. It's an overlander. Uh, he's got a ton of experience in search and rescue. Um, he's actually got an episode on the Budget Overland podcast you can check out. They've got some really good stuff and new to the market, but I would highly recommend checking them out. If you want to support somebody, let me know in the comments down below if you've got other questions related to this. It's definitely a good skill to have. I hope you never have to use it. But if there's something that uh, questions you have or things you're not sure of what you should be adding to your kit or something like that, let me know. And like I said, share this with your friends, your family, anybody that you're going to be on the trail with and make sure that everybody is trained to the same level so that if something happens, you're all ready to go. Other things, make sure everybody knows where first aid kits are. It doesn't do any good if you've got a kick-ass first aid kit and then 
it's hidden. So make sure people know where it is. Make sure it's easily accessible in case you, you need to get to it. You don't want to be having to unload your whole the whole bed of your truck to get to this. So things like that to think about. And, and just make sure people know what's going on. Have a plan of, of who's going to be doing what in your group. And, and really, I would highly encourage you to train and train like you're actually going to do it. Like I, I had my gloves on today. Not a huge thing, but it definitely does change a little bit. You lose a little bit, bit of dexterity by doing that. So yeah, hit that like button. Comment down below if you have anything. And subscribe. I'd really appreciate that. Help to grow the channel. Um, let me know what else we can uh, 